Welcome to MGIDN Balab C Series High Throughput Single Cell RNA Library Preparation Set Operation Guidance Video. In this video, we will provide you with step by step instructions on how to operate the DN Balab C Series for Single Cell RNA Library Preparation. Before we start, please make sure to read the operation manual. It contains detailed instructions and best practices for each step of the workflow. The field of single-cell research has experienced remarkable advancements in the past decade, revolutionizing our understanding of system biology and expanding our knowledge of cellular heterogeneity. MGI has developed the DN Bulab C series high-throughput single-cell RNA library preparation set, which incorporates unique single-cell capture, labeling methods, and DN6 sequencing technology. This innovative solution enables a portable, real-time, and streamline workflow for comprehensive single-cell genomics research. The whole workflow can be respectively divided into sample preparation, droplet formation, demulsification, reverse transcription, second-strand synthesis, cDNA and oligolibrary preparation and sequencing. The droplet formation, a crucial step in the workflow, is performed by the DN Balab C4 station. This pocket-sized device streamlines the process, allowing you to generate droplets with ease. Starting with a cell suspension, the process involves just a few simple steps. Utilizing the DN Balab C4 station, cells are encapsulated within droplets, enabling cell lysis and mRNA capture on beads. With an efficient emulsion breaking and recovery system, the beads are effectively recovered. And the PCR amplification, circularization and DNB library processes will be carried out. Subsequently, sequencing and bioinformatics analysis can be carried out to unlock valuable insights from the data. The DNB Lab C4 revolutionizes the workflow, making single-cell genomics research efficient and comprehensive. This versatile solution is well suited for a wide range of genomics research areas, including oncology, immunology, and disease mechanism research, and etc. The preparation set includes five boxes. Box 1 contains reagents for droplet formation, including cell beads V2, lysis buffer, cell solution, index carrier, suspension reagent V2, P50 oil. Box 2 are reagents used to perform reverse transcription, second strand synthesis and cDNA amplification. Box 3 contains reagents for library preparation, including, fragmentation enzyme, ligase, adopter and barcode primer 1 to 16. Each preparation set includes one DNB Lab C4 station, and 16 C4 single cell RNA chips and filters. Before commencing the experiment, it is essential to wipe the interior of the laminar flow cabinet with DNA off. Pay special attention to the operating surface, as well as any metal and plastic objects. Remember to wait for 10 minutes after wiping to allow DNA degradation, ensuring a pristine and DNA-free environment. Next, turn off the light and turn on the UV light for sterilizing for at least 15 minutes. Carefully wipe the gloves using ribonuclease sap to eliminate ribonuclease contamination. Clean the laminar flow cabinet surfaces and equipment thoroughly, paying attention to the pipette and operating surfaces. Firstly, let's begin with sample preparation. It's important to note that specific requirements apply to cell samples. This library preparation set is designed to be compatible with common human and animal tissue slash cell samples. For cell, nucleus, size, it is recommended to use cells, nuclei, with a diameter smaller than 40 micrometers. The suggested input cell number is between 5000 and 30,000. Adjust the cell concentration to 282 to 2000 cells per microliter. Cell viability should be greater than 80%. Cell aggregation rate should be less than 10%. Cell impurity rate should be less than 5%. To ensure accurate results, 
it is important to check the cell concentration, viability, and aggregation rate using a cell counter. This will provide valuable information about the quality of the cell samples and help optimize the experimental conditions. Once the sample preparation is completed, we can proceed to the next step, droplet formation using the DN Belab C4 station and C4 single cell RNA chip and filter. During this stage, the cellar nuclei undergo lysis, resulting in the release of their contents. The mRNA molecules present in the cell are specifically captured by the cell beads V2 within the droplet. The cell beads V2, developed by MGI, are specially designed to capture microparticles equipped with millions of oligos. These oligos contain sequencing adapters, cell barcodes, unique molecular identifiers, UMI, and a poly-T DT, sequence. To prepare for the experiment, retrieve the required reagents and allow them to thaw at room temperature. Make sure to take out the P50 oil ahead of time and let it equilibrate at room temperature for approximately 30 minutes. After thawing, mix reagents by a vortex, centrifuge briefly and place in the clean laminar flow cabinet until use. Once the reagents prepared, we can now move forward with the preparation of the cell reaction solution. Take 24 microliter cell solution to 0.2 microliter VPCR tube, then, add 28 microliter index carrier and 4 microliter ribonuclease inhibitor. Add 24 microliter LF cell suspension. The total number of input cells, nuclei, ranges from 5000 to 30,000. If the volume is less than 24 microliter, the PBS, containing 0.04% BSA, is added as a complement. After the reaction solution is prepared, gently pipette it to mix thoroughly by using a pipette with the measurement range of 70 microliter. After the cell reaction solution is prepared, proceed with the preparation of the bead suspension. Take out the cell beads V2, and gently invert or pipette it to mix it thoroughly. For each sample, aspirate 100 microliter of the cell beads V2 and transfer it to a 0.2 milliliters PCR tube. Place and keep the PCR tube on the magnetic separation rack for 3 to 5 minutes. Gently remove and dispose of the supernatant, to avoid loss of the beads. Remove the PCR tube from the magnetic separation rack and add 72 microliter of the lysis buffer. Place the DNB Lab C4 station on a horizontal table. Gently and evenly press the buckle on the protective cover with the right thumb, and hold the other end with the other fingers. Gently lift up the protective cover to open it. Clean the inner pad of the protective cover with the 75% ethanol. Take out a C4 single cell RNA chip. Install the chip by pushing it into the chip slot from the side. The left edge of the chip should fit exactly with the left edge of the chip slot without any gap. Add the solutions to the wells in the order of cell suspension, P50 oil, and bead suspension. Before adding the cell, nucleus, suspension and the bead suspension, separately pipette them to mix thoroughly. Ensure that no bubble forms during pipetting. Add 80 microliter cell suspension to cell well. Then, add 800 microliter V50 oil to oil well. Add 8 microliter of the deer reagent V2 to the bead suspension. The deer reagent V2 should be added to the bead suspension before droplet formation, and the mixture should be gently pipetted and mixed thoroughly, to avoid formation of bubbles. Add 80 microliter bead suspension to beads well. Insert the tail end of the protective cover into the groove of the outer housing of the DNB Lab C4 station. Press and hold the other end of the C4 station with the left thumb. Press the front end of the protective cover into the groove with the right thumb until a click is heard. Hold the front of the C4 station and pull out the tail until a click is heard. Droplet formation start. The whole process will take around 9 minutes. After droplet formation is performed, press the buckle to loosen the protection cover, so as to stop droplet collection. Incubate the collected solution at room temperature for 20 minutes. Incubation at room temperature aims to fully hybridize primers on the beads with mRNA. Short incubation time might reduce mRNA capturing efficiency. Long incubation time, which should not exceed 30 minutes, 
might cause mRNA degradation. During incubation, do not move the chip to prevent droplets in the collection well from splashing. During incubation, keep the protective cover closed but not buckled, to prevent foreign matters from falling into the station. Take down the protection cover, mount the chip sleeve on the chip by correctly aligning the sleeve with the well to prevent the droplets from splashing, and remove the chip for subsequent demulsification. Press and hold the reset button on both sides of the C4 station, and push the tail to its original position. Clean the inner pad of the protective cover with the 75% ethanol. Next operation is the demulsification, single cell beads will be recovered by the demulsification recovery system. The total run time will take about 20 minutes. And it needs be noted that the user should have vacuum pump set up for this operation. Take out C4 filter connection hose. Connect the C4 filter tubing and tube of the vacuum pump. Connect the C4 filter to C4 filter connection hose. Turn on the vacuum pump and set the pressure to 0.08 MPa or 800 M bar. Pre-rinse the C4 filter with approximately 4.5 ml of the 6 times SSC. After observing that no liquid remains on the filter membrane, evenly pour all droplets in the collection well of the chip onto the filter membrane. Add 700 microliter of the 6 times SSC to the collection well with a pipette. Pipette the liquid to mix it thoroughly to collect residual droplets. Transfer the liquid to the C4 filter, and reserve the tip to repeat this wash step twice until no beads are left in the well. After observing that no liquid remains on the filter membrane, quickly pour approximately 4.5 milliliters of the 6 times SSC to wash the beads. Repeat the process twice. After observing that no liquid remains on the filter membrane, turn off the vacuum pump, and disconnect the vacuum pump from the C4 filter. Connect the C4 filter to a 50 milliliters centrifuge tube. Add 700 microliter of the collection buffer. and gently pipette the surface of the filter membrane several times until the beads completely suspend. Transfer the collection solution containing the beads to the 1.5 ml centrifuge tube. Don't discard the tip. Then use another tip to add 700 microliter collection buffer. Gently pipette the surface of the filter membrane several times by using 700 microliter of the collection buffer, to suspend all remaining beads. Transfer the collection solution containing the beads to the 1.5 ml centrifuge tube. Place and keep the centrifuge tube on a magnetic separation rack for 3 to 5 minutes until the liquid becomes clear. Gently remove and dispose of the supernatant, to avoid removing the beads. Remove the centrifuge tube from the magnetic rack, and add 200 microliter of the 6 times SSC with the pipette. Pipette and rinse the beads on the tube wall, to suspend and mix the beads thoroughly. Evenly transfer the suspension into two 0.2 milliliters PCR tubes, approximately 100 microliter per tube, and reserve the tip for continued use in the next step. Do not discard the tip. Add another 200 microliter of the 6 times SSC to the 1.5 milliliters centrifuge tube with the pipette. Pipette and rinse the remaining beads to mix them thoroughly. Evenly transfer the suspension into the two 0.2 ml PCR tubes. Place and keep the 0.2 ml PCR tubes on the magnetic separation rack for 3 to 5 minutes until the liquid becomes clear. That's all about the operation guidance of C4 station and single cell RNA chip. Then, proceed reverse transcription reaction and following steps according to user manual. Finally. The constructed SS Cerdinal library can be sequenced on DNBSIC T7RS and DNBSIC G400RS sequencers.
It should be noted that the sequencing strategy for the C-series high-throughput single-cell RNA library is different from that for a typical RNA library. Before sequencing, please review the relevant sections, Chapter 10, Sequencing, in the Library Preparation Manual carefully, and strictly follow the instructions provided. For cDNA libraries, read 1 is 41 bases long and read 2 is 100 bases long. For oligo libraries, read 1 is 26 bases long and read 2 is 42 bases long. If sample tagging is required, a 10BP barcode sequencing needs to be set up. If there is any difficulty in gathering samples, it is possible to mix two sequencing libraries. The two libraries can be mixed after DNB preparation is completed, based on the concentration of each library. For mixed sequencing on the DNBSIC G400RS sequencers, the proportion of cDNA library should not be less than two-thirds, while for mixed sequencing on DNBSIC T7, the proportion of cDNA library should not be less than three-quarters. The sequencing scheme involves sequencing read 1 for 47 bases, sequencing read 2 for 100 bases, and sequencing the sample tag for 10 bases. We hope that after watching this video, you can operate our C4 device and conduct the single cell RNA library construction experiment on your own. If you encounter any technical issues during the experiment, please feel free to send an email to mgiservice at mgitech.com. Our technical team will be happy to assist you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.